Aw, oh, yeah. It's time to give a two-whoop salute. Wait, better yet, a watch out, Baza, to Barry from Foolin' with Bricks, the master of classic castles. Wait, what's this now? Blue Milk Baza. This was not a paid advertisement for the Cali Brick Click, but watch out, Barry. <laughs> Back everybody to episode eighty one of Cali Brick Click. I feel like we're we're just chugging along. You know what I'm saying? We got the the normal suspects, plastic architect. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Shy time. Yo. And a special guest, Brick Scene. Rich. What's happening? What's happening? No. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> before we get into it, uh, you know, you know the basics. You guys can find this on all your platforming podcast, your podcast platforms. You got that little backwards. <laughs> But, you know, go ahead and rate us down below. Leave a comment. Enjoy the video. You know what I'm saying? Enjoy enjoy the ride. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. That's I love cool. it. How's, how's the week been for everybody? Uh, well, <laughs> well, well okay. You want to start what was going on with you because you were a little stressed out. So let's just. Let's uh, just well, <laughs> like, like I was saying before we started recording, I've been sitting out there with a uh, massive uh, multivac uh, thing that's sucking up. Well, like I said, out of out of five, five meter by three meter square rug, uh, I've managed to get 50 liters of water out of it so far. So, hmm. yeah. She, so you had a flood. Yeah, the flood. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yes, we got flooded. We, we, yeah, yeah. I don't just go pouring waters onto the, water onto the rug. Sorry, man. Uh, yeah, we, we've had we've had two major storms come through, and 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 I got hit hard on Tuesday. I think it was Tuesday now. So yeah, we we got hit hard, man. And uh, it's only happened once before, but hey, luckily, luckily, there's no no major damage. Nothing, nothing major, nice, but right. you know, it's an inconvenience more than anything. Yeah. The Lego's fine, right? <laughs> Mate, it's in, in plastic bags and plastic boxes, so it's, oh, yeah, it's, fine. it's completely fine. Yeah. It's sealed off. <laughs> it is sealed off. Yeah. But it was the first thing I saved, I'll have you know. It was the first yeah, thing. Yeah, you just ran, ran straight. <laughs> like, like, what do you do in case of an emergency? I'll, obviously, you take what you, like, what, aside from your essentials, what would you grab? Would you grab anything? A cat. A cat. Yeah, aside, aside from your, aside from the essentials, I'm excluding family members, animals. If it's a real emergency, I'm not grabbing anything. I'm getting the hell out of there. Oh, That's I would. I said, yeah. I'd probably I grab, my, grab. Yeah, I'd grab that. My my SG guitar. That would be the the one thing. <laughs> nice. The Lego is plastic, man. I'll come back and find it later. Um, I I have like six hard drives I take with me. There you go. That's a that good thing I won't also. leave. I'll take. I don't know somewhere. nothing. If it's like life or death, like nothing's worth your life. Yeah, these six hard drives are worth it. <laughs> six hard drives. <laughs> All my stuff's in the cloud, man. I'll just log in somewhere no, else and pick no, it up. You know what I mean? No, no, no. no. See, see, that's <laughs> what I thought. Also, first thing I'll grab is this laptop. Mm -hmm. then, yeah, like all my childhood like videos, like my dad uploaded everything to Dropbox years ago. Mm -hmm. I have like twenty terabytes worth of stuff. <laughs> that's not going. <laughs> that's not going to Dropbox. So uh, I've lost I've lost a computer recently, so anything that I had on it the, at the time was gone. So I've got like a a line where everything after that is now on the cloud. So it's uh, that's smart. Yeah, no, I, I I mean after I lost like everything from high school below, I've like been super paranoid about like losing memory, like just mm -hmm. like not like memory in a computer. I'm talking about like memories in my head because like I lost it all, so I don't have anything unless I'm given to him by like other people. I don't I don't have photos, videos of me in like high school below. So, and this is prior YouTube. So like, <laughs> um, I just like anything that I film, anything I record, I put like everything to hard drives, mm -hmm. raw and everything. Like, so one's for backup in case the hard drive takes crap and then another one for use. So like, I already have like a to go, like I put in like a to go, like grab bag, like mm -hmm. already in a safe. So like in case of emergency, like everything else, like your passport, stuff like that, grab, leave. Mm -hmm. It takes five seconds. It's not like a... <laughs> And it's right by my door. It's not like it's going anywhere. No, fair um, enough. You, you got you got it all handy, ready to go. No, I, I'm you're, ready. You're, you're, I'm it like sounds ready. like you're expecting an emergency. Right? Oh, I mean, always, <laughs> man. I'm a prime real I'm, I'm paranoid as hell. Oh, very <laughs> cool, man. I trust, cool. No, I don't trust yeah, my yeah, government man. to help me for anything. <laughs> oh, well, maybe, maybe I'm not doing it right. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> maybe you know, no, maybe no, you're no, smarter no. than the rest of us. You know. <laughs> no, but aside, aside from that, that aside, I mean, it, you, that's pretty interesting. Like all, like all this is essentially replaceable, right? 
I like anytime I tell my like my brothers when they crash a motorcycle, I'm like, as long as you can stand up, your twenty five thirty thousand dollar bike can be replaced. Yeah. It might take you years, but in the same essence with this, like all of this Lego, for the most part, can be replaced. And and you know even if it can't, it's, it's only it's only Lego only Lego at the end of the day, isn't it? You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's true. It is only Lego, but mm -hmm. like I said, um, so stuff kind of happened in the lego world mm -hmm. speaking of possibility of losing side of stuff uh the atte got pushed back so we Interesting. think so we yeah, think yeah. Totally. um any speculations to why i personally am happy about it personally <laughs> not, not, why, for, not, not to, because there's so much being released in august it's another 200 bucks i can push to two weeks later <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of stuff that I was expecting to buy. Plus, the uh, the Bricklink Designer Program is being charged in August, so I'm already expecting a hit on that. So already, like, without the ATT, I'm almost like close to a G on August first. So like, I'm perfectly content about one thing that I don't have to buy because this thing, like, if you don't buy it now upon release, you're probably not going to get it yeah, anytime you might, soon. You might miss it. Yeah, just like any other clone set, like. Star Wars Lego set it's going to be unattainable for like maybe the third batch of restocks. So I figured like, okay, cool. This is just one less thing for me to buy on August 1st. I think that is that I have to like disagree that I don't think that stuff is inaccessible. What? I mean, I don't like think, yeah, I feel like you're right. It's not inaccessible, but you do have like, a period where it'll be on back a back order. Mm -hmm. Oh, it'll be yeah, it'll be gone yeah, first. It'll be yeah. a while until you get yeah. to actually play with it. So, so. I, I've I've seen a shipment list. We're not even getting it until the fifteenth year. So, um, oh, so you're cool. <laughs> yeah. So so look, I just assume you guys will talk about the first of the month, and I'm like, oh yeah, it'll be two weeks later for us. So right. <laughs> yeah, I forget but, but you're not here. <laughs> But you know what, though? You know what? I've mentioned this to a couple of people. I actually, and it's not a conscious thing, I haven't bought any Lego since they announced the price increase. And it's not necessarily be, it's not because I, I, I've certainly thought a lot more about, you know, how much I'm spending. But at the same time, it's like nothing decent has sort of come out that I really, really want to spend that money on. And I was just sort of looking back at the last thing I bought, and it was the trash compactor. And that was that was prior to the uh, the price increase announcement. So I'm like, wow, it's actually been a couple of months. I've been a good boy. Nice. Yeah, Do you think, often. like, is there anything on your list that you haven't bought yet that came out a while ago that's going to go up in price? No, no. So you've Which has probably it. helped. Yeah. I put everything I wanted. To put it that way. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, there's, good. There's, yeah. Oh, there's, I, I can go into a store and buy something every time. Don't get me wrong. I, there's, I can always find something to spend my money on. But there's nothing yeah. sitting on a shelf right now that I go, you know what, man? I really. Oh, I mean the ATAT. -AT, I'd love to get that, but I, I mm -hmm. feel that that's beyond my my means at the moment. So I'm, I'm not going to splash out on that. But yeah, as yeah. far as you know, sub three hundred New Zealand dollars or sub sub. Yeah, a couple hundred new, uh, US dollars. I haven't, there's nothing yeah. out there that I want, you know? Yeah, like the, we, I know I want R2 and um, the NES. Mm -hmm. And I know those are going up in price. And I've been like, I don't know why I've been like waiting to, I've been pushing them off for like a while. Mm -hmm. hmm. But I don't feel like I, buying them right now. I want to get the castle on August 1st. Like I want to get my Harry Potter sets that are coming out like in a couple of, or like with the gift with purchase that's coming out in a couple of days. Like, yeah. Mm. Like, I mean, you don't, don't, get me, don't get me wrong. August first and onwards, there's about ten sets that I really, really want. You know, don't get me wrong. Right. That that whole not wanting anything is going to mm -hmm. disappear very, very quickly. But mm -hmm. whether I'm going to be able to get my hands on, like I'm hearing that the uh, the Galaxy Explorer is exclusive to some obscure store here. You know, like it's. Oh, it's like okay, what if? Like, all right, that's like a bit of a weird one. Retail store, but like not online. Kmart, yeah, of all places. <laughs> Kmart, <laughs> Kmart. We've like I've never seen Kmart have any exclusives ever. Kmart went out of business in the United States. No. Did it? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's thriving here. It's thriving here. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Uh, it's a weird one, but yeah, I want the castle. I want the Galaxy Explorer. I want the uh, the BD One Droid. A couple of the other Star Wars sets. The Scythe. The, the um, yeah, all those sorts of things. The uh, ATT, of course. But yeah, I'm glad they're spreading it. <laughs> I'm glad it's been delayed. <laughs> Bonus, you know, like sweet. <laughs> Spread my costs like, for me. Two you weeks. Know? Just push it out two weeks. I'll be good. <laughs> push it out two weeks. Yeah, let, me, let me slip another payday in between. Yeah, let me, just, yeah, let me get it there. Oh, because because so, not only that, like the Camaro got announced. Oh man, I was just about to bring that up too. The Camaro <laughs> looks fresh. 
That's I haven't nice. built the Mustang yet. You know, remember the, the blue one? Uh, <laughs> I still I, have that, it. That's going top. up in price too, man. And that's the interesting that's already had a price increase. So by really? the time that goes up for another price increase, it's going to be 30 or 35% higher than it was when it initially retailed. Yes. <laughs> so that's an interesting one, that one. I got to say, I, I, I stay thing. away from those those creative vehicles, though, man. I'm into my cars in a big way. And I just know if I start collecting those, that that's a rabbit hole that I'll end up yeah, going down. So I've been a good boy. I've been, I've stayed away from those ones. So what? Not even the Camaro? No. Nah, no interest. Camaro. Zero so interest. So in fact, the Camaro is probably more of an interest to me than the, uh, the Mustang because yeah. I don't like, I don't like Fords. So, um, wow. Well, we can just cut this right now. <laughs> but I don't tell you that before, Ninja. No, <laughs> no I, I think the Camaro is good. I like the fact that there's like three diff- different options to it. I think they're running running with the Mustang. There was two options, right? Old class or souped yeah. up and not. So yeah, the yeah. Camaro looks cool. You could leave it as a coupe or the fastback. Or I don't even think it's the fastback. It's but just like a drop top. Yeah, it's a drop top. Or a it drop looks top so thing. good. It, it looks, cool. And the commercial is so like, or not the commercial, but like the promo yeah. that they did for it mm-hmm. is so well done. Yeah. No, Shout out to um, Greg LBB. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think it looks like him. Oh, I need to check that out. I haven't seen that yet. No, no, I think it does. Oh my god, it's so good. It's so good. Oh, I I'll like, check that out. Especially, if I really a, like those cars. Yeah. No, yeah. but it, see, it, I, it was like the Fender guitar. It's like, why do they give you like just give you different colored parts now to make it more to flesh it out to charge you more, you know, and all that sort of yeah. stuff. I, I just I feel like there's there's an element of being ripped off there. You know, like I, I don't know. You mean like having two options in you a set? Should. You well, you've got also, four options in that set, haven't you? In the Camaro? Yeah, but you can also like frame it yeah. like, I don't know. I actually think it's a good thing. So like with, with the Back to the Future one, like people have like different emotional attachments. Like this. That's three different. That's them. three different movies. That's not just literally changing the color of the racing stripes going over the top. Fair. Of it, you know? Like it's, it's, you know, like, like literally you're going to build it. You're going to go, oh, that looks cool. You're going to replace a couple of pieces and go, oh, that looks cool. That color too. All right. On the shelf. <laughs> Would you have preferred <laughs> it like how they did the Fiat with like different colors and different boxes? I'd, I'd say that hmm. would be a better option because hmm. people will, you know, having different colored cars and then having the option to have one as a drop top, one as a, you know, hard top as well. You know, I think that's kind of cool, but just but literally then that changing. forces you to buy more yeah, I sets. More expensive too. Oh, absolutely. Cars. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But, think- but yeah, but immediately you're not going to have a whole handful of pieces that are redundant to anything after building mm-hmm. it. You know what I mean? You, you are going to have two cars. So, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's a personal thing. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I, don't know yeah, some, yeah. I know some people yeah. really appreciate it. So that's, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think there's an argument for both. I think it's interesting. For sure. I didn't, I didn't even think about that until you popped See, they, they should have, they should have not just happened to have this sitting here, gunship. What they should have done with this is if they were going to go down that road, is giving you the two options so you could have the one with the front doors or, or these bits. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. Why don't they do that in Star Wars sets to give you the option? You know? but, is that like, a, but it's kind of an, isn't it kind of a new thing or it's, it's kind of an old thing that's becoming a new thing again. Right. It's mm-hmm. like, it's very like old, events. older style Lego where it's like you have multiple options with like the mm. same set mm. and they're kind of, it feels like they're kind of integrating oh, it. Like, 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 like back in like the nineties when you see like, th- like the options on the back of the boxes and then like, you can make this. Oh, oh, those are complete built. rebuilds though, aren't they? Those are complete rebuilds, not literally just changing out like the racing stripe, changing out a couple of tiles across the top. No. So yeah, red instead of white, you know? Yeah. Well, at least you got instructions now to do it as opposed to you figuring it <laughs> you out. Just, just reverse engineering it from, <laughs> <Yeah>. from sight. <laughs> That's funny. We have instructions Which is like now. It's just own challenge. And those are really interesting videos to watch as well when people do that. Have you, ever, have you ever looked at the really old Star Wars instructions? And they've like, like, I think it was like the old original blue TIE fighter and things like that. And on the back, they've like made mechs out of it. You know, like things that have absolutely mm-hmm. nothing to do with Star Wars. And it's like these really weird alternative builds. They look kind of cool, but you know, it's like, I Random. don't have any of those instructions. <laughs> no, I just I saw some the other day, and I was just like, "Oh wow!" As if anyone's ever going to build that. I think it's there. I think there's a lot of sets that have done that. Like, you know, um, Sans has like a couple of those like Star Wars Technic sets that are mm-hmm. like the Technic ATAT and stuff, which is really we bought it recently. And then we you get into the manual, and there's like 20 different things to do with those same pieces. Yeah. They all look terrible, but like. You know, <laughs> <laughs> kind of like the the technic droid that they had yeah yes. exactly yes. yep yeah. same it's like the same genre of stuff so yeah. we we finally got the big atat and then he's got like a couple of the like more standard sizes and stuff now and then so we'll put that one next to it and then i think but he got the i know he got the technic one because he wanted to do 
like a mock of an ATAT under construction and like in a warehouse. Oh, okay. And like that tech cool. one would look really sick. And that was yeah, like having the frame. Stuff. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, no, that that would be cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So aside um, from the Camaro, do you what else is coming out for the rest of the year? You guys know? I know the office is coming out. Are you kidding? There's like gonna be a winter village set and we're gonna like lose our minds like every time. There's like gonna be the big train for Harry Potter. I'm gonna lose it. Like there's so much stuff that's still to come out. Like so, it's just August. We have six more months. I heard and then we're gonna about, get hyped um, again for another modular. Like what? Yeah, that that'll get announced towards the end of the year, won't it? You know, we'll start seeing. Well, the, the, so, the rumors will start. The rumor mill will start. We'll start hearing. What something about how I'm getting at is that this is not going to stop. <laughs> no, it's not stopping. Like we have to change. Nobody else is changing. We have to change. Like, <laughs> the market is crashing. We don't have as much money, so we need to change our attitudes. You know. This is something we're going to be talking about this week on. You know, I don't mean to sort of. Uh, oh no! Go plug yourself yeah, away. Yeah, my podcast. No, but uh, something that we are we like that we're just talking topics this morning for it, and um, uh, we're, we're the one that we're looking at this week is the bubble bursting. You know, like because yeah, like literally everyone I talk to is is reigning in their spending in one way or another. You know that they're they're sort of finding ways to cut some things out or or, or things like that. But Lego just seem to be relentless in what they're mm -hmm. releasing and or putting their prices up. You know, so it's like. I think people are also like shifting the way that they're spending now because like travel is up like crazy. People are traveling like everybody, like you can't even take PTO because everybody else is traveling as well. And it's like, mm -hmm. it's just out of, so I think the summer at least people will be spending money on travel instead of Lego. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so there, I don't know, but who knows? I don't know. It, it certainly seems like, but also like in the U S at least like unemployment is like an all time low. Yeah. Same so, here. Same here. Yeah. The price of everything's at an all time high, yeah. you know, so, so go figure. We just had the, um, the, the official cash rate, if you like, you know, the, uh, the, the mm -hmm. interest rate, the official interest rates like have gone up as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that went yeah. up quite a bit yesterday. Yeah. And now, mm -hmm. you know, that's the kind of thing that people, people see that in the news and it's not necessarily, they feel it straight away, but they see that and go, dang, things are going to get tighter. I better start writing yeah. it in. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And even though like if people just like have their money sitting in like the market, like even if they're not like buying and selling constant or like selling constantly, it's just watching like their wealth go down is like a feel. It's like a feeling of depreciation, mm -hmm. right? Even though that's like a more long term investment, and so people are feeling, you know, cash poor. But what's interesting though is like even though mortgage rates have gone up to like six percent now, basically. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's same. Yeah, yeah. By, the, by the end of the year, you know, they were like fifteen in the eighties, but like anyway, so they're gonna go. They're going up, and but in but. They're not predicting that prices are going to go down because inventory is so low in the U.S. And so it's just people that are people are just going to be like people need to buy homes. Unfortunately, like people are growing and like our generation is the biggest generation. And it's like we need more space because a lot of people are having more kids and stuff. And it's anyway, it's a whole it's, it's funny you say that because we bought our house 10 years ago, you know, and mortgage mm -hmm. rates were basically where they're at now mm -hmm. 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So we've had it so good for 10 years. They dropped and they kept dropping. And of course the pandemic brought them down even mm -hmm. further. And mm -hmm. now they're coming back up and everyone's like, Oh my God, you know, but actually we were looking at it last night to see when they're, how, how long they're fixed for and all that sort of stuff. And yeah. they're fixed for another couple of years, luckily. Um, mm -hmm. So hopefully we'll be able to ride this through, but you know, seeing them at this rate, at this height now or the, where they were, it's like, well, that's what we signed up for back in the day. So Mm -hmm. 10 years yeah. ago for you guys 10 yeah years that's, ago. 10 years ago so. that's like more palatable i guess yeah but like mm. what's interesting for us is they're actually not they're predicting things to slow down and inventory to go up for like homes mm. but not prices to go down so like mm. for example seattle's inventory is up 40 percent from last year now but prices are still going for the same amount they're just not growing they're just like settled mm. so uh, it's, yeah House price, house prices here were going crazy, crazy high. They were Same. like yeah. stupid high, like basically taking first first home buyers completely out of the market. Yep. And, 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 and yep. I mean that that kind of thing's been happening in other big cities around the world for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. But, but here, now it was that everywhere. It, everywhere. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but now now in Auckland, people are starting to feel that, and they can't. You know, you can't get on the on the ladder. But um, you know, the, the the thing is, is we all look at our house prices have have gone. Silly, like our, our house prices is more than doubled in the in the space that we've owned it, you know, and well, three times right. it's actually three worth three times the amount now. But if we were to sell it, we still have to buy back into the same market, you know. That's, yeah, that's where are you problem. going? Exactly. So unless so, we actually move to some beach in the 
ass end of nowhere, yeah. then there's, there's not really. It's, it's hard. No, there's nothing. definitely like, so in the U S at least, and I don't wonder if you guys have that, like if you're over a certain age, like over retired age, you can actually transfer over your, um, like mortgage payment and your property tax payment and stuff like that, like over to a new home. Mm -hmm. Um, and so like, basically what it does is it forces people to not be like stuck in their homes for like, for the rest of their lives. And so there are opportunities for that. It's like a one-time like shift, you know, there are ways to like navigate that in the U S at least. And even yeah, if you're like, here, yeah. 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 And so, yeah. And then like, you can, there are like, you know, real estate tools that you can use and like tax tools that you can use to like figure that out. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's hard. It's like, okay, fine. You like. You buy a house for a million dollars. It's worth $3 million 10 years later. And like, okay, fine. So you sell that and then you have to pay half of it in capital gain taxes and then buy a new house. So like it gets really complicated. And it's like- yeah, We're lucky we don't have the capital gains tax here. We don't yeah. have that. So I, I could sell it today, make a ton of money. In fact, even because I lived in London for 10 years and the, and the, one of the key reasons that we moved back here was so that we mm -hmm. could buy a house because we couldn't afford a house in London. Yeah. But now <laughs> the way the house prices have gone here- as my money here is now good enough to go and buy a house in London. That's that's the way it is. So I don't know, man. It's it's, it's the world is a bit tipsy turvy at the moment. You know? like, it's uh, weird. It's super yeah. weird. We've been trying to buy a house. For, I, well, I've been trying to buy a house really for like the last three years. So I've been like watching it really aggressively, not just like the California market, but like all over. And it is like incredibly crazy how much it's gone up. But it also like does still feels volatile. It doesn't feel like buying a house for $800,000 in central Florida is a good idea. Like it doesn't feel like it objectively that never felt good. You know, you're like, well, what else is here? It's not like, but buying a $2 million house in the Bay area still feels more stable, which is stupid. It's so stupid. It's like so the ne negative equity sort of so side of things. You know, that's what people are finding here. They paid, you know, big, big money for their houses because it literally happened overnight as that all yeah. of a sudden these houses were all selling within four or five days all around my area and then overnight you start seeing the real estate yep. signs staying up longer in a week like, hey wow that hasn't sold and that's because yeah the the interest rates go up or some commentator on the news has said hey expect the worst you know and all of a sudden no one wants to buy a house you know well people are so i know like some economists are worried that people are gonna start paying off their mortgage as fast as possible because they're so terrified that they overspent but um, economists are saying that that's really like a short term issue and like over the long term, they should be fine with their real estate and that they should just be putting more than like three to six months worth of savings in their account for like, a, let, let's say like, you know, a, in case of job loss or something like that. So instead of like rushing to pay off your mortgage, they're saying put more money in the bank. Hmm. That's what I did. <laughs> yeah, which is probably a good idea. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I bought my house before all this price increase stuff. So like, I, I lucked out, but like. We just recently refinanced like a couple months ago now mm -hmm. and like we paid off some credit debt and then all the rest of it just is just sitting in our savings because and then everything went to crap as far as the war is concerned so like we're like we, we just don't want to touch the money that we have in there like there's it's, no reason to you know, like if something oh, yeah. you have kids if something happens to one of you guys like you might turn into single income and it's like there's no reason to risk it exactly no. yeah uh, and look we're, we're quite lucky in new zealand that um you know Thing, the prices of things are going up, but we're in a pretty good position at the moment. You know, like mm -hmm. it's, it's like I think it's because we did this ten years ago, and if we did it five years ago, when we would have been paying double for what we did for our house, that you know the mortgage now we probably would have been struggling a little bit. You know, with the, mm -hmm. the uh, mm -hmm. increases. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we we did we did it did make us check how long our fixed interest rates were for last night. We know, hearing, hearing that it went up yesterday, and yeah, they're they're fine <laughs> until November twenty four. So. Can you guys refinance in New Zealand? Is that yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah? We did, we did that, we did that a few years yeah. back. Mm -hmm. yeah. wow. Anyway, I think real estate is really interesting. That's like what I do now professionally, so it's like very fun. Oh, nice, nice, so, nice. Yeah. No, I, that's, I, I really appreciate having my own house. You know, imagine if this was this, this flooding that we had this week was in a rental or something like that. We probably would have had to move out, or you know, it's just, it's, mm. oh, it's true. Yeah, but it also wouldn't have been your problem if it was a rental. Yeah, that's like, true. That is yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're in California, your landlord would have to put you somewhere. <laughs> yeah, true. Mm -hmm. Then you have to mm -hmm. wait for them to fix it. So you're on. Oh, time. it's a pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's mm -hmm. not. It's not easy whether you own it or rent it. <laughs> you're still screwed either way. <laughs> cost money. Thing again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> talk about finances. 
Um, <laughs> we diverted completely Sorry. to another direction in which I don't know how to like segue into what we were supposed to talk about. <laughs> so I, I was literally trying like to figure out a way to like just snap this to <laughs> the topic for today. I have a good idea. I have a good segue. Okay, go ahead. Oh, well, I think what's important is that like when we're like cutting back on costs and when we're spending less that we focus more on like the community aspect of Lego and like not necessarily just, you know, spending money and buying things and like collecting Lego, but also like touching base with like the online community, but also like in your act where you live, which means like lugs and Brixine knows better than any of us about lugs. So oh, well, yeah, done. Get into it. well done, Claire. You managed to, you managed mm -hmm. to get that one from all the way over here. Yeah, to all the way over here. That's, 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 some, that's some, <laughs> some special stuff going on there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, for, for those of you that don't know what a lug is, it's a Lego users group. Um, they are everywhere. If you want to look for them, I'm sure they're they're on the land website of all the lists of them, right? I think that's right. Yep, yep. You so can, you you can look at it like on a map as well, you know, so mm -hmm. you can you can look up your closest one. So, uh, so, Rich, what oh. is a lug? Like, what is it exactly? Well, it's a bunch of like-minded Lego enthusiasts that like to get together on a regular basis to shoot the crap about Lego, you know, and and sort of share interests share builds put on you know collaborate put on shows mm -hmm. um for example the, the 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 luck that i'm involved in is, is actually the second one in the city we have two in the city of, and, and that's quite a rare thing to have two in the same city um but we're we're, we're we're the smaller one um and we basically started off by doing some shows at schools you know doing some sort of charity shows so people just essentially showing off their collections and their mocks it's not just about mocks i know a lot of these bigger conventions are more about mocks but you know at this level this, this sort of community level people like to see collections as well you know so um that's primarily what it's been uh, i guess sort of focused around and what we have focused our group on is sort of gearing up for these types of things as well as getting together and having a chat of course and, and, and sharing our interest but um we also took on, uh, well, the, we, we classed it as a lug event, was one of our guys did the, uh, the, the Guinness World Record for the longest toy train to travel oh. 10 meters. I don't know if you saw that, you know, Great things video. like that. So Great it's like video. any little event that you can involve a group of people that you can then get more people to sort of come in and take an interest. I guess that's that's how we um, or encourage others, you know, members of the public to come and take an interest in Lego. It's, so how does like one person, when they find one, join one? I know that it's fairly different for different lugs. Like I, I, I've I've heard that some lugs you have to apply to. I think I think a couple of them in, in Australia that you actually have to go through an application process. Um, for our little humble lug here, it's literally just if you want to come and take part, come and spend some time with us and and and, and do it. You know, there is there is a very nominal fee, but it just helps with the with the running. You know, the logistics and and you know. The fee covers things like paying for the little rope barriers that go around the tables, you know, those sorts of things. So, you know, you have a little nominal fee that, that goes along with it. But no, for us, it's all about a group of people. And we're actively growing at the moment. Or we're actively trying to grow a bit more. What you've got to remember as well, that, and this is something that we could probably get onto in, in a bit, but we've, we've just come out of restrictions here, COVID restrictions, and much later than the rest of the world, despite us in New Zealand getting off to a, a really good start and you know, being being looked upon very favorably around the world as to what we did, we ended up getting hit pretty hard in the end. And uh, as far as lockdowns and you know, when the case numbers started going up big time, so we're fairly recently. When I say recently, last sort of six months, we we've been out of um, restrictions. There are still some restrictions at the moment, like mask mask restrictions and, and all that sort of stuff. So the attitude of people at the moment of, of about going to shows or getting together and all that is only really starting to sort of you know, people are starting to sort of get that confidence again, but um, hence why we're, we're we're actively sort of trying to grow it again. But it's, it's been an interesting one. But yeah, anyone anyone can take part. Kids, we've got kids, we've got we've got adults, we've got some older adults, we've got younger adults. Yeah, I think the youngest kid that's involved is like six years old. Um, wow! Displaying at shows, you know, it's it's awesome. <laughs> it's, it's it's cool stuff, you know. But we don't even care. You could bring along. Whatever creation you, you you have, you know, like it's it's not even like it doesn't have to be like this fantastic sort of aesthetically pleasing thing. If you're a seven year old kid and you've put a few bricks together, come and show it off, man. Some other seven year old kids will be keen to look at that just as much as 
as, as much as the rest of us, you know. So Most definitely, you got to start somewhere, and then oh, I actually, think the the feedback they get will definitely make them grow. You know what I'm saying? Mate, uh, we had this little guy. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen him on on Instagram. His name's Two Mana Lego Master. He's a little kid down here. He's he's, he's got a little bit of a following on Instagram now. Um, mm. But he uh, he's seven. He's 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 on the spectrum. He's he's uh, he's got um, you know, he's he's gets really really into it. And you and you look at some of the stuff that he comes up with, and you can tell this guy is going to be good. He's going to be mm-hmm. good in the future. But this was his first show that we did a couple of weeks ago, and it was a bit you know to get him. Hey, look, don't worry about it. You know, get your confidence. Come along, do it. Man, the kid absolutely loved it. You know, people were just going past, pointing out his stuff. Other kids the same age as well, looking at his creations and going, wow, you know, that's so cool. Because at that level, you know, seven-year-old talking to another seven-year-old or eight-year-old, they, you know, they could fire the little ideas and what inspired them and all yeah. that. It might make no sense to the rest of us, but they seem to, <laughs> they seem to yeah. speak the same language. But, yeah, it's, it's just really cool to see that and see that excitement and, and, and the, uh, the feedback that we got afterwards from him. Uh, and, and his family was was amazing. So, uh, you know, there's, there's definitely, you know, the, the, that's that's definitely the, the really positive aspect of it. Because mm. it gives them like somewhere they could fit in. Because without that, they just feel like left out. You know, kind of like a misfit. Like, oh, I like this stuff. Not everyone really likes it. But once you get that group behind them, yeah. But I don't know about you guys, but when when I first started collecting Lego, coming out of the dark age, you know, I didn't know that there was other adults that. You yeah, know, same. bought Lego sets. You know, I've been walking into toy shops and looking at Star Wars sets, going, "Oh, one day I might just buy one of these just for fun." You know, and, and kind of waiting for my kid to come along <laughs> as as the excuse to go and buy one. You know, and now it's like, a, "You're staying at home, child. I'm going to go and buy some Lego." It's it's, it's yeah. completely the other way around. Nice. But then getting into I think I probably discovered the lugs before I discovered the the, the YouTube channel. You know, the Facebook groups and and all that sort of stuff. Um, and realizing that there was a club of adults that did this, you know, it was it was a real eye opener for me. And, and you see that with um, the people that come to these shows as well. Even if it's a little community school show or something like that. You get the the parents coming along that just looking for something to do. They turn up and all of a sudden they see all this cool stuff and see a bunch of bloody aging adults behind the tables. <laughs> They're like, really? <laughs> this this is okay? You know? It's, um, yeah. I guess it's a safe space. You could look at it like that. It's a safe space for us nerds, you know? <laughs> so I didn't know what a lug was for a very long time. I think when I got back into the hobby, like really into it, like I Googled a lot. I found a lot of YouTube. Um, this is before I created the channel or before I made myself social, like on social media, like, on its own so like i did find my local lug which is lagola um they're famously known for contributing to or creating like the sets for like lego masters and then um lego movie they mm-hmm. did that mm-hmm. but like and they're so big now that like they can't accept any new members so like right. yeah. yeah they've created two other lugs on the side so like orange county lug which is below by disneyland and then i think long beach lug is the other one so like but they all like you know even though they were separating in different cities they all still congregate which is still a pretty cool thing but like i i did apply and i didn't get a response for like is that right ah, I, I didn't get a response ah. ever me too. that's really sad though like, that's that's yeah. pretty sad that, like no, i mean heck, we, yeah we, we would be responding straight away you know we're we're and 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 we i don't think that we would ever have a cap on on, on our numbers do you know what i mean i mean don't get me wrong Auckland is probably not quite the same as, as, as LA, don't, you know. But we've got you know four four million people here, four and a half million people in Auckland, and we've got two lugs, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah so. we're we're you know fourteen million in one city. I mean, <laughs> but 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 like, lugs. but and, and interesting, you mentioned that that you know the lug was involved in the Lego Masters. Like a few of our guys, even our small humble lug, have sort of made waves. In, in similar ways like one of the guys was involved in doing all the building on lego masters um, behind the scenes with the brick master guy mm-hmm. um another guy uh did the train guinness world record another guy had a lego idea set get to ten thousand before getting rejected so despite being a sort of small humble lug as i keep sort of referring to it as you know um the deal. guys the members have made waves out there you know so mm-hmm. it's 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 a good way in uh to sort of doing all that sort of stuff and <laughs> that's being a, that's, inspired. that also sounds kind of intimidating because like uh going back to mine like these guys the guys that are in this one at least the heads of it they're like pretty known as far as what they do and it's like 
how if if you were a kid like because you sound very welcoming towards the, the kid that's now a part of it like i don't feel that from them at all see, when i see I, them at all I, I i don't know i feel the same thing with lugs out here yeah i was looking doesn't... for lugs and i'm like man you guys seem like elitist. you have to have yeah like elitist like you need mm -hmm. this much or you have to have this many builds and shows under your belt mm -hmm. Like, yeah, do you know what I? Do you know what I would do if I were you guys? Then, and this is kind of similar to what we ended up doing. Start your own lug, man. Yeah, I've thought of that. Yeah. Start your own lug. Yeah. There's just absolutely no reason to be even wanting to deal with people that want to sort of have that elitist attitude and all that sort of stuff. And look, I'm gonna, without sort of dissing the other lug here, you know, we get along well with some of the guys, and some of the guys were involved in both uh, when we were starting ours up. But, and it's not that they're elitist by any stretch of the imagination. They're, they'd accept new members left, right, and center as well. Mm -hmm. But I just, if I if I ran into any sort of roadblock, and I would just start my own and go, you know what? Screw you guys. I, we'll, we'll take we'll take the guys that are feeling pushed out. You know, we'll be the runt. Yeah. We'll, you know. I'm and, and, yeah. I can't do that again. <laughs> no, I thought about it. Uh, yeah, I know. He started enough stuff. But, like, I thought about it, like, <laughs> once <laughs> we choose like where we're more settled and stuff and like especially if we have kids and stuff i think that would be like a fun family activity thing to do um but i'd actually yeah. really really like to start a lug of creators like because we all we all sort of you know we sort of interact with each other a lot that mm -hmm. you know if we're ever in the same i mean I, admittedly i'm not exactly going to be coming to your city and displaying with you guys anytime soon with this massive mock that i've built at home of course that's just going to be too hard basket but i feel that there is an opportunity for like you guys even that you guys would meet up you know that you could have some sort of create a lug in the states you know and, and you see some of these like brick world chicago don't they? they had lugs coming along where they had collaborations and and things like that but a lot of that yeah i am um, i would definitely start your own if, I, if, so there, if, if you wanted a group you know yeah. there are two lugs that are kind of like online presence more so than anything else and that would be like empire and rebel lug correct i think so yeah i think yeah yeah tricky lug too tricky lug too but they're all like kind of not tricky lug but empire and rebel are just like they're kind of all the same demographic mm. as well and they're like the same age range and stuff and like there's no there's like no universe where I would fit in there and that's not what it's about neither do you know what i mean i don't i don't go along to meet all these other guys in the lug to have everyone have the same mindset same collection same ideas mm -hmm. of mocks as me i go along mm -hmm. because i want to meet that little seven-year-old kid that's just pulled this crazy contraption out of nowhere mm -hmm. and I, I go heck that's pretty cool I'm, i get inspired by the seven-year-old kid right. as much as i get inspired yep. by the guy that's retired and he's just you know sitting at home and he's created this mock because he's not working anymore do you know what i mean like yeah. that's, yeah, that's, no, that's I, the I, range I, of people that we have you know? i don't think they're intentionally like you know very um you know monotonous and you know like, <laughs> i don't think it's intentional that that's the case i think it's just you know natural and circumstantial in terms of like who they what attract yeah. yeah maybe they it's niche isn't it it's niche mm -hmm. and it's 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 yeah. also like one is like a star wars lug you know the other one is also named after they're both star wars named lugs even though they do non-star wars things and so and they were started by like a bunch of teenage boys and so those teenage boys are now in their early 20s and and that's it you know it's just like like what the hell am i doing there you know what i mean like it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> Make, it yeah. doesn't make it's not like why so i agree well, you with you that you wouldn't makes, you wouldn't join a lug to feel left out put it that way that's yeah. that's not the feeling that you want to go so you would go along to a couple of meetings and you go this is not my thing and you you know so i would i would encourage you to start your own and i wouldn't even uh, you know talking about the land side of it i would encourage you to create a, a user group and not even have the expectations of getting recognized. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be a recognized lug. It's more about being a group of people, like-minded people, that can maybe do some good for the community. I mean, that was what, that's all that we really set ourselves up for, is to A, have a chat with each other about this hobby that, you know, a couple of years ago probably didn't blow up quite as well as it has now because of Lego Masters and because of pandemics and all that sort of stuff. If we're talking pre those times, it was literally a bunch of nerds that wanted to get together and talk about Lego as adults and not feel stupid about it. You know, like, it, it's, I mean, I, I certainly don't feel that way now, but that's how I felt at the time. Yeah. It was like, oh my God, there's some people that actually don't think this is stupid. <laughs> all right. So, so let's hypothetically make a log right now. 
hypothetically, mm-hmm. we're not really mm-hmm. making money. What do we do? What do you What do you do as far as recognition goes, or what no, do you no, do no, as no. far as just setting one up? Just oh, look, setting one up. My, it's literally you. What I would do would would be uh, essentially get a bunch of people together. Like I say, like-minded people meet regularly, meet once a month. Um, I would encourage as best as you can to do it face to face, and I don't mean necessarily getting in the in the same hall together or the same room together, but having this sort of interaction. You know, not um, not you know through emails or through text or anything like that. You know, face to face, sitting there, showing each other things, kind of like what we do on panel live streams. It's a very, very akin to that sort of thing, you know, like the closest thing <laughs> to an online like that I see is something like, you know, London Calling. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You get the same people on and, and, and new people are coming in all the time and all that sort of stuff and everybody's sharing the same sort of chat, banter, talking about things, basically just, just keep, keeping everyone's interest levels up here, you know? Right. And essentially just building up the community within itself, mm-hmm. right? Like, mm-hmm. Once you gain that rapport with your other A falls and stuff, it's just I don't know. I feel like that's starting it right there. Exactly, it's a safe space, isn't it? It's a safe mm-hmm. space for you to sit there and talk about your talk about your addiction. You know, <laughs> I guess it's like <laughs> I guess it's like Alcoholics Anonymous in a similar way. You know, in the yeah, like you're you're around, Megan, around a circle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but, right, so to, to make it an official lug, like not recognized by Lego, but I'm, I'm getting, I'm alluding to there eventually. Mm-hmm. What do you have to do next? Well, the, the only the unofficial lug is you would necess- you would you'd have to create it as a. Uh, I mean, I don't know about your laws in the U.S., but here we'd have to create it. We have to sort of have a company as such because there is finances going through it. It's a charity, you know. It's a non-taxed organization, but um, you know, you have someone looking after the money. You have someone who is the president of the lug who essentially just oversees everything because that's something that I feel that you need to have in a lug in order to make it function properly. If you have four or five people who are standing there who all have the ideas and talk at each other and just want to pull it in all different directions, it's not going to work. So the best thing you could do as far as when you're setting it up is actually give someone sort of overall hierarchy, if you like, and not necessarily, you know, the be all and end all because you can, you can shift them if you don't like them. But, um, you know, make sure that there's, there's a, a vision for it, you know, a mission uh, statement. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I don't think you even have to go that far, but you know what I mean? Let's make sure that you're all on the same page, that you all want to get the same thing out of it and start inviting people in, you know? And, mm-hmm. and like I say, if you start including money, then you, you, you've got to deal with the legalities of that. You know, if you're charging people for it and, and, and paying for things, but look, I've found that people are more than happy to pay a very small fee knowing what it goes towards so it goes towards like i say you know like you might get a bit of reimbursement for gas or you might you're paying for the ropes that protect your lego you know stops people from reaching over onto the tables that sort of you know small things like that but if you're all on the same page with that sort of thing you know just have a few official sort of positions like my my sort of um i i was the ambassador for my for my lug you know as far as you know, an official capacity on my lug, but now taking, I've taken a step back from that, but my, my capacity now is essentially to deal with all the graphics sort of side of things. So Hmm. if there's a flyer that needs to be done or something like that for a show, I'm going to be looking after that from now on. If I want to do like a little video or something like that, you know, that's my responsibility now. Yeah. There's another guy uh, who does all the comms. So as far as, you know, and I'm sure we'll get onto the land side of things, but any sort of opportunities that come out of land, it's his responsibility to make sure that email goes out to all the members to make sure everybody has an opportunity to submit something or create something for a project that they might be looking at, you know? So the next step, <laughs> how do you get recognized? By so so, so the, you, you've got to do a certain number of events per year because uh, you're going to have to report those back to land. Now, I can't remember if it's changed now, but I'm pretty sure it was two or three events in the year. You've got to have X number of members, active members. You've got to have your hierarchy in place, you know, to, so, and you've got to have someone nominated as an ambassador that can be the go-between them and your, and your community. Mm. Um, once you've sort of satisfied a few of those those things you, you you get the recognition status and of course that brings a few extra things uh, for the group you know so you get access to lug bulk 
you guys know about lug bulk. So can you basically uh, can you explain what that is? So lug bulk is uh, once a year you get access to essentially Lego bricks and pieces at a heavily discounted rate, and mm. you basically go to your community. You get told what element lists are, are available and, and to be ordered. You go to your community. You have to reach a certain threshold as far as value goes or, or quantity goes. You put in an order, and it comes back to you, and everybody gets a whole bunch of you know. And it's and it's good for those people that are doing those big bulk um, purchases for mocks. You know, you might be yeah. filling in the inside of a mountain with a ton of two by four red bricks. That sort of stuff is what it's what it's for. You know, yeah. um, that's that's what you that buy comes it for. in handy though. It's very, very handy if that's if that's 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 what blows your hair back, you know. If you if you're making those sorts of mocks, but um, uh, you also get support. So we're we're a tier one um, lug. So you have different tiers. So you have a tier one, tier two. Um, tier one, you get so many sets or so many value value worth or, or money's worth of sets that you can just. You're not allowed to sell them. You're not allowed to give them away or anything like that. You're basically there for the club. That's your thank you for helping out and all that sort of stuff. And we're not talking huge amounts or massive sets or anything like that, but it's a, it's a token thing. And we, we've literally just distributed ours the other day. And it was nice because the people who have been involved in putting on shows and all that are getting a bit of a thank you back. So yeah. that's, that's definitely a bonus side. Also with the, um, uh, the, you know, the, there's, there's responsibilities for being recognized as well. So you have to, uh, as a club, you have to put on X number of shows, obviously, to satisfy, or X number of events. I'm not going to say it's shows because you know we classed the uh, the Guinness World Record attempt as a as an event because the members of the public were able to come and see it. It was done on the side of a train platform, you know, so there was the public were walking past. That was a bit different, but you know, we do things like um, I think one of the other lugs at the moment are doing um, hiding Lego around a museum. So there's all these different sort of things around a museum and, you know, people have cool. to go find them, that sort of thing. Just yeah. small things that sort of get the interest, pique the interest, you know. But the main thing that people do are, are of course, shows. And they're usually, usually for a charity or fundraising for a school or, or, or something like that. But as I say, the responsibilities you then have to, as a recognized uh, LEGO user group, is you have to report back to LEGO, you know, how many people attended, how many were adults and how many were kids um what you charged what the event was for um as a, as a lug ambassador you have to take part in their forums so they have an online uh, forum where they discuss anything from problems to legalities to you know the events help each other out with things collaborations you know it's a very wide range there's obviously the opportunities on there as well uh, so you have to be active on that as an ambassador you have to take part in all that sort of side of thing and and, and, and off, offer opinions you know um i'm trying to think if there's anything else you sort of you obviously have to uphold you have to uphold the values you know that there's obviously lego's values there's land's values you have to be seen to be upholding those values at all times and ensuring that your your community does too so. Uh, did the pandemic change the rules in any way or bend them in different ways? Because you, you said like they had, you have to throw a certain amount of events every year. Obviously, that wasn't possible. You have to like, I, I remember someone saying that you have to be, you have to have in-person meetings, not online meetings. So did, with with what happened around the world, did that change the rules for, uh, to be recognized? I'm just saying in terms of like, let's say you were to create an online one. And if you did want it to make it official. Would they hold like a group like that official since they don't meet regularly in person, but they do meet Look, regularly uh, online? Well, no, I, th I think that if you are stipulated that's how, that's how your lug operates, then, then, then you probably get a bit of leeway there. Whereas I feel, I feel, and this is, this is, I'm going to definitely caveat this by saying this is a personal opinion is that the, the rules didn't change and there wasn't much leeway given to the fact that people were, uh, locked down for a long time. Uh, it seems that there has been a bit of, um, what's the word for it? Uh, comeuppance, if you like, for these people who, or these lugs that haven't necessarily been able to be that active over the last couple of years. It certainly affected us in a big way. Um, the way our lockdowns worked, if I'm talking for, for, for the way that we were able to meet is that essentially no we, we were having meetings at people's houses you know like one of the guys that was part of our lug he um 
he had like a, a Lego museum at his place, <laughs> you know, like, so we would meet there, the ideal yeah. place for us all to meet and get enthusiastic about Lego. He's not going to invite anyone around to his house while a pandemic's on, you know, like, or even, even shortly after a sure. pandemic. So look, I, I feel that the pandemic has affected some lugs and I feel that they have maybe been affected their state. It has affected their status if you like, because they haven't been able to fulfill their criteria um, and it has come back to bite them. Um, unfortunately, very unfortunately. Um, I can't remember the names of any in particular, but I know that there's a couple of lugs that are, are no longer recognized lugs who were essentially part of the furniture um, before the pandemic. And, you know, it's, it's, it's been raised that the pandemic was a, a reason that they weren't able to be as active yeah. um, but it fell on deaf ears by the sounds of things you know I'm, I'm, I can only go by what I read you know so yeah oh, that makes sense but so what would you say like the pros and cons of being an official lug recognized by Lego would be <sighs> look the pros and I know it means a lot to some people is the, the, the whole recognition being recognized by the brand that you spend all your money and in, in, in life and hobby and you know and basically the thing that you're all about you know there's there's the kudos if you like or the, the fact that you can say that you're recognized uh, and then there's of course the phys- recognition well does it you know I mean, does it at the end of the day ways. does it um I'll, I'll come back to that i'll come back to that ninja i'll come back to that though because because okay. you know the other pos- the other pros are the yeah, of course the, the physical things the lug bulk and the support you know um and the opportunities that you know, some people really want to take advantage of, you know, through those opportunities through land, through the, through the, the forums, the cons, um, is that you have to report all those things back. You have to do these events. You have to be seen to be meeting and doing all these things, but you are unable to fulfill them maybe because of, you know, like, you know, the pandemic and all that sort of stuff. So there was a massive element of stress for me, especially because we weren't able to do anything and even trying to get our members together. You know, people's habits have really changed since the pandemic, you know, trying to get everybody into a hall full of Lego, three, 400 people. You're going to get people who are going to come to it who are not going to care. They're going to go to every Lego show or they're going to, or they're just, you know, happy to take that risk. But there's going to be a portion of people who are just simply not going to go because they're going to go, I just don't want to risk getting sick. You know, and I feel that we're still at that here in New Zealand anyway. I don't know about you guys in the States, but I feel that that is still, still something on people's minds, which is affecting uh, that side of, you know, the responsibility side of things. Um, look, you know, the, the whole thing about the, the, the kudos and being recognized and all that, we could put on a show just as successfully and no one would bat an eyelid whether we were recognized or not whether the paying public who are coming into the show or the people who were displaying. Do you know what I mean? It definitely means more to some people within the lug than it does others. Um, there's there's people who literally just want to build stuff, take it and show it to people at that community level. And I feel that's where I'm getting back to. Do you know what I mean? Like I, yeah. I stepped down as the ambassador of, of my lug purely because I just didn't want to be involved at that level. I was... I didn't feel that it was from 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 my point of view. I just didn't feel that I cared enough <laughs> to 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 deal with that side of it, deal with the responsibility side of it. Whereas I care a lot about speaking to the kid that wants to come and look at my stuff that's sitting on a table in front of me. I have so much more. I get so much more out of speaking to those people and you know getting them into. I mean, heck, I, I can honestly say this last show we did about two weeks ago. There was at least two or three people that came up to me with because their kids wanted to go to the show. They came up and looked at me and had a look at because I had some sets there. And they looked at like the Daily Bugle that was sitting on a table and they went, That's a set. I'm gonna go and buy that tomorrow. You know, like that's you know, all of a sudden someone who hasn't built Lego in 20 years is going, Wow, is it okay if it's okay for you at 44 to be building that, then it's okay for me at 44 to be building that. You know what I mean? Like um, and that's what I discovered two or three years ago as well, you know, was, was, was meeting these guys and sort of seeing that it was okay. Right. So I, I get a lot more out of that. I was just going to say that I feel like that's 
that's honorable of you just to step down instead of drag the lug down because you were like you know what i'm saying like you you didn't you weren't filling your position so you just like step down as ambassador instead of just being the ambassador even though you didn't like it and you know, yeah well spreading the i you might you know look we've we've been in this game for a little while now as far as right. you know all of us all, all four of us here we've we've been making content and we do other things other than just build the product and and we run the risk of losing sight of why we got into it we all sort of built lego not to make youtube videos not to show it off to people in a school hall uh not to report back or discuss the legalities of whether you can print things on a torso or not do you know what i mean we didn't get into lego for that we got into lego to build it to do it for our own heads or to spend some yeah. time with our family or or things like that but i felt going that far and having those responsibilities for me i was like do you know what? I just don't have any time to actually sit down and build stuff anymore. Do you it felt like I mean? work. It felt like work. It felt like work that somebody was on my case for. You know, I had someone on my case saying, you're not doing enough. You're not contributing enough. I'm like, hey, I didn't know that was, you know, I didn't know I could get into trouble for that, you know, like uh, for a start at my age, you know, I don't know, like having people telling me off like that, you know. Right. Um, Plus, you know, as, as a content creator as well, you know, I don't have the biggest of YouTube channels, but it sort of clicked to me at one point. I was like, Rich, you've got two and a half thousand people sitting there waiting for you to make videos, you know, like, and um, you need to concentrate on those people too. So it was like, okay, I need to take a reset here. <laughs> I need to get back to, and, and mate, I'll tell you now, since I, I, I stepped down as ambassador, I've probably built more Lego than I have. And I think it's just a, it's a head thing, man. It's a head thing. It's a head space. It was me going, I don't have to worry about that because I was, you know, you do worry about that. You, I mean, and, and it's, yeah. it might not be for everyone. Maybe that's, it just wasn't for me. Other people probably enjoyed a lot more than I do that whole administrative side, if you like. Yeah. Um, but I just wanted to get back to the, like you say, back to the roots, man, back to dealing with the community, the people that want to look at my stuff. I can talk to them face to face over a table about what I've built that week. And, and of course my YouTube thing where, you know, I, I get a lot of joy out of, speaking with you guys and doing all this sort of kind of thing, you know? So taking out <laughs> the Lego official recognition, if one lug were to not want to be recognized by Lego, they're still allowed to use the term lug. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, they, yeah, they, they but I can, I can only assume so Lego user group. That's, that's what you are. I mean, you're just not a recognized, you're not an R lug. You're not a recognized Lego user group. And look, if you were to start a lug tomorrow and you didn't have any aspirations of joining LAN, I would, Go to a local retailer and say, hey, look, we've got a group of people in the city that are real hardcore Lego, Lego fans. We are essentially going to be putting on shows for charity or we're going to be you know, getting together once a month. Is there anything you can do for us? We'll advertise you at our shows. You know, We do that with our, with our stuff here as well. And you can then probably get some benefits that you may have seen by being a recognized um, lug as well. Do you know what I mean? So I think that's... My advice to a, a, a new uh, user group that, 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 that's, you know, a bunch of people are putting something together these days is I would go to someone local, a local retailer, you know, mum and pop shop, say, hey, would you like to sponsor our, our events? We'll, we'll get your name out there. We'll make sure we mention you all the time, go on all our advertising, all that sort of stuff. And you probably do more for them than you would for the Lego group by being a club then. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That reminds yeah. me of like yeah. local card shops out here, how they have... Mm -hmm. Uh, certain nights like they'll have a pokemon night they'll have a board game night you know you know so, so i mean i i definitely recommend anybody to join one and or create one yourself um having created an organization myself i do know the longer you keep it alive and then the longer or the, sorry the the more it's growth you have as an organization the more administrative and responsibilities you start to have so to keep the innocence of what it is when it started is a very very hard thing and you really I have to totally like, agree totally you, agree you have to like literally stop what you're doing and look yourself in the mirror and be like is this what we started this for and mm -hmm. and and i see that you, you're doing the same thing right now with like i need to step back away from this because it's not why i joined this no, it's, it, no, it's, it's, it's not it's not forget even the whole joining the lug thing i'm still happy to be part of luck it's not why i got into lego there you go i didn't get into lego to be reporting stuff or stressing out that we can't put together an event or stressing out that we can't get a group of people together to satisfy the company's um 
you know, agenda <laughs> agenda agenda yeah goals or requirements you know what i mean and and look i i i'm not knocking the program the regime whatever you want to call it i'm not <laughs> knocking it i'm not knocking it <laughs> but but because because some people are really really into it and want to do everything they can for it and, and really enjoy that side of it for me personally i started to lose sight of why i got into this and i had to take a step back because I wasn't enjoying it, you know, right. and that was what three, two, three, four weeks ago now that that I made that decision and and voiced that decision, and I haven't been happier since. But I don't want to put anyone off becoming a recognised lug because, like you talk about, you know, you start this thing and it becomes a beast later on that you may not have envisaged it to be in the beginning, but you may have more people involved that might be happy to take on that role. Right. You know, like we've got this we've got this kid that's 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 an uh, I say he's a kid, he's he's a kid compared to me, put it that way. He's he's, he's essentially an adult, but he's a kid. Um he um <laughs> but he's he's got the drive, he's got the energy, you know, he's he's pretty handy on on things and like man, this this guy he, he tells you he wants something, he'll be pestering you every two hours to make sure that you've done it. And that's not my style, and maybe that's what it needed. Do you know what I mean? So if, yeah. if he's that onto it and that um, ambitious, <laughs> yeah, then yeah, sure, you you can have that responsibility, man. You can be the ambassador. You know what I mean? Some and that's, people that's, just that's, that's where just we're like at. that stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly, exactly. I tried it. I look the land forums. And this is the other thing about the land forums is that when there was there's a lot of really serious good conversation on there. There is a lot of really good conversation, but there's also the petty stuff where you've got RLFMs moaning about the fact that they haven't got their sets before the embargo date and, uh, you know, it's it's ruining their bloody viewing figures and all that sort of – it's like, look, cry me a river. I really don't have time to be reading that sort of crap, do you know what I mean? Or be involved in that sort of conversation because as a content creator, I've got to do it the hard way. So someone moaning that they didn't get their free stuff before a certain date because it's ruined their viewing figures – yeah, well, you brought that, that, stuff. Stuff. <laughs> that leads into something that i didn't think we were going to talk about but i guess since you brought it up um is there like an animosity between like lugs and content creators on youtube and or instagram or tiktok uh i wouldn't say there's animosity um what i would say is I feel, I feel, and again, I'm going to quickly caveat and say this is a personal opinion, is that the... You being both. <laughs> well, no, because well, I'm not recognized content creator, you know, and, and but I feel that LAN is geared at this present moment, geared quite heavily towards the content creators, towards the RLFMs. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily at the detriment to lugs by any stretch of the imagination but there is definitely more of a focus on within the land side of things on the rlfms you know there's just there's there's, there's been more in the space around movements of people coming and going there's been talk about legalities well, can, and what can they can um, and can't do and, and all that sort of stuff can you explain that that acronym for those who doesn't know what for those of people that don't know what rlfm is rlfm uh recognized lego fan media and what is that it's essentially recognized lego fan marketing there you go um yeah. <laughs> you know they you know and and look they'll say it's not about the marketing it's about the marketing <laughs> it's marketing man there's nothing else it can be it's marketing you know and it's and hey look people really enjoy making content for lego and, and i'm not going to knock them so so you know yeah i mean i We've talked about it quite a few times here where we feel like, that you know, l like lugs and or like more in-person type of thing, like w gatherings of Lego has it really like, like they don't, don't really care too much for or appreciate the like content creators and what they can bring to the table. Um, obviously, what you're saying is that they, you know, Lego's kind of focusing in that way. Do you think like since lugs have been so I've heard, I, I wouldn't really know, but so I've been heard, so I've heard Lego l lugs have been losing perks as time has progressed within the past maybe five six seven years um that there might be a hidden grudge in that i could definitely see how people would say that i could definitely see that um there's been there was a change recently i think holly mentioned it as well a change with the online communities which which sort of got people's backs up a little bit and 
the sort of feeling when that happened was, oh, lugs are next, you know, where they're losing their support. I know that some lugs have been um, reduced from tier two down to tier one. Um, so essentially losing some support. Uh, there's been a lot of offboarding. Um, there's been a few that have come on, on board as well. You know, there's a few new ones. But um, I feel I feel that a lot of lugs have really been hit by the, you know, because the lugs, look, here's, here's the, the difference between the lugs and the online com- and, and, you know, your RLFMs. Your RLFMs can be one person sitting here making a video, putting it out there, and their community are the people who come on and comment. That's their community. As a lug, my community is the people that I have to go and meet face to face and have physical meetings with so many times a year and all that sort of stuff. And like I said to you before, people's habits have changed. More people are sitting at home watching videos. <laughs> More people are sitting at home consuming the content around that side of things or watching builds. or And that's been created out of the pandemic as, as, as much as anything. Do you know what I mean? People, you know, choosing to see you know, and the way people consume it as much as the way people are creating it um so the on you know as far as the meetings go i think that you know we we could i think this year and next year will be telling because as the lugs can all start getting back together and the shows all you know the big conventions will start happening again there may be that more and 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 there may be the backlash from not meeting face to face uh, for a year, two years, that people will want to get out. It's like the holidays. Everyone's going on holiday now. But people might, once they've got that holiday bug out of their system, they might go, okay, let's, I want to sort of get with to a group again. I don't just want to watch some stuff on a computer, you know? So it may sway back that way. But right now it seems quite focused on the, the content creators and the, the RLFM side of things rather than the lugs. Um, but that's not to say that the lugs have been frozen out by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, we're, we're still very much active and trying to do as much as we can to continue on with our um, recognition status. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I totally understand the pros and cons just with my own other hobbies. So um, it sounds very similar, uh, just a lot safer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a lot safer. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I get it. I, I, I can see where like a, a, a lug can benefit from um, being recognized and all that kind of stuff because it in my other worlds that's it does the same thing. Um, being being a part of a larger group of organ of of like minded in, in, like minded groups does have its serious benefits. But like you could easily be kicked out of it for just not being involved. So um, it's the same same thing. And then exactly but, yeah, exactly. But but right. but if if it's out of your hands as far as been able to do things i don't know as was it was it i mean the, 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 i guess the problem with the pandemic side of things was is that we all didn't know a when it was going to end how long we were going to be locked down and what we could actually do so people trying to come up with new i like i think if people sort of knew that if they were going to be stuck at home for two years or a year and a half or or we were going to be seeing you know the effects of it for two years i think people or lugs even the recognized ones would have spent a lot more time coming up with a plan in order to satisfy the requirements and not just sit on their hands and wait for it all to blow over and we get back to the status quo. That's what it feels like what happened at least here for my local lug. Like it just felt like they put everything on hold rather than like creating an online community for themselves. Just even like doing like just crappy Zoom meetings. Like that didn't seem to happen. Like there was no effort to transition. And we live in the Bay Area. Like there was no effort to transition from an in-person to and even like even for the short term like that seemed like an easy solution i mean like entire industries were able to shift like why like to counter you because like if you're not able to make a quick shift and have survivability survivability like ingrained in you like what is the point of investing in you at the same time like you clearly don't have the capacity or the drive to do that i'm just playing devil's advocate here because no no i hear you i hear you and because because it wasn't able to transition and modernize and um you know really it, it still create a community even though like in the new style of community creation it becomes almost unapproachable and elitist in in a, in a way like in an unintentional way you know it's like people who intentionally like created something to like be open and welcoming because there was no access point to it. It, it became an isolating thing. And so why would 
someone or why would the regime, as I agree with your use of that, continue supporting something that has no growth potential, which from there, this is like from a very like narrow perspective. And then rather than like it being, oh, like we're in person or we're not at all, why can't it be like we're in person, then we're digital, and then we're in person and digital again? And I, I, there is a lot of effort and work that has to be done to transition something to an online community. And so, and I agree with you that like, you have to like realize it's like, is this the time? Is this the thing that I want to put? Is this like the Lego that I want to experience? And if the answer is no, why should you still be recognized by Lego then? And this is like, I, I don't, I'm literally playing devil's advocate. I hope you know that. So I absolutely. And no, no, look, I agree with you, but, and, and, and here's my counter to this. And here's, here's um, how I put it back to the powers that be is that we didn't know whether we were going to be locked down for three months which meant, or sorry, I'll rephrase that. We didn't know whether we were going to be locked down for a month or six months or a year. Okay, so at one month you go, hey, we can put everything on. We can put everything on hold at the moment. It's all going to come good. We don't need to worry about things. We will we'll look at it when the time's right. Right now everyone's focusing on looking after themselves, staying safe, wearing masks, not getting sick, looking after their families, homeschooling. All that crap, which is all the stuff that I had to deal with when I might have, you know, my kids were going to school. I might have been able to sit here and spend an hour on LAN and, and, and you know, do the things on the forums. But no, I was spending my entire day homeschooling. Um, from their perspective is, well, the, the attitude that I feel from their perspective is, well, if you can't do it, find someone else in your lug that can do it. But the attitude amongst us in the lug was, we're not even thinking about meeting at the moment. We're not. We're, we're dealing with our own problems because of the fact mm -hmm. that there's a pandemic happening. Now, when you get to sort of three months, you go, okay, this looks like we're, right. we're going to be doing this for a little bit longer. So we had a couple of online meetings. But the online mm -hmm. meetings were to organize what we were going to do when we – so we even had dates for shows within, say, six months of the initial – Mm -hmm. pandemic hitting us so we after three months we were getting on online meetings and having chats about organizing the show mm -hmm. and putting plans in place and you know assuming that everything was going to blow over nice and quickly that we were able to then do that yeah and then of course that that show comes along and yeah. we're all still locked down or we yeah. we're level two so only 10 people can meet inside so it's like okay we have to scrap that okay we've got another one on the horizon but then people are like, Let's okay, well, we put all yeah. we put all this. No, but we all put in this effort for the one that mm -hmm. we couldn't do. So maybe we shouldn't put in the effort just at the moment because it's a lot of organization. And to be mm -hmm. honest, we're still focused on our own stuff. So I did put all that effort in for something that's now canceled. So all of a sudden you're talking the space of nearly a year because that's mm -hmm. this is how it worked for us. And we were still facing pretty heavy restrictions, even well, up totally to demoralizing. 18 months. Yeah. That's demoralizing. Yeah. It's 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 like as much as we we love this product and we spend all our waking hours almost thinking about it. It's not like that for everyone, even in the lug. It is, as you know, the people in the lug. You ca you can't expect that level of of um, yeah. involvement from everyone. So when one show gets cancelled, they're like, okay, well, give me a call when we can actually. Put it. You know, happy to be a part of this. Happy to totally. So know, okay, I have, give, give me, I have yeah. I have another question. Okay, so I think this is this goes back to like what we talk about here all the time, which is like the difference between a support system for RLFM and a support system for lugs. So like, you know, LAN, it sounds like was initially created as a support system for lugs. So like, what does it matter if they take a couple years off and like the benefits go away? My groceries are here. So that was that bell. I need to check. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't it doesn't make sense if you're not like a marketing machine, like what does it matter if you take a couple years off? But the thing is, is like the support system is supposed, it's taking care of two things that have totally different objectives. I'll be right back. Yeah. But that, that comes back to what I was saying as far as, you know, dealing with some of the, the, the problems that come up in the forums as well. It's like, I don't give a toss about the problems that the, the RLFMs are having because it literally has nothing to do with me. So I'm wading through all this sort of stuff that, yes, it probably should be two completely separate entities on LAN and should be, you know, the, never the twain should meet because it really, I mean, there is there is definitely some crossover there. Claire's right, though. You know, why, why should these people who said well it comes back to this doesn't it is it a marketing machine or is it a community 
machine. Do you know what I mean? Like the lugs are very much the community thing. And if you start putting, you know, requirements on us that are sim simply out of our control at the moment that we can't adhere to, then most people will just throw their hands up in the air and go, you know what, we just, we simply can't keep up with this, you know, okay. whereas the RLFMs were in a different position because Lego was growing big time over that time and the RLFMs are there to market the products and Lego still needed that, still needed people sitting at home, making videos, making content on their new sets so that they get pushed. So it comes down to marketing versus community, doesn't it? You know, isn't isn't there like a third category in that list online? I remember seeing on the website there was like all the the, 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 yeah, the what's that? recognized the, the online communities. So okay. those are like your what difference. <laughs> uh, they're like your oh, brother's brick. I'm pretty sure, like an online community. Oh, you talking about like like blogs and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Some okay. of the, some of those are RLFMs. There's this. I don't know that that line seems to be a little blurred for me between RLFM and the online communities and the, and the and the lugs because yeah, and they're the ones that lost a bit of their support recently as the online communities. Do, does Lego doesn't Lego give stuff to like Ryan's toy reviews or stuff like that? Uh, I don't know about Ryan's toy. Well, I mean, like, like channels like that, like really large, well, grosses way more views than the entire leg community put together. I could see does, that. I think like Lego Star Wars that? theory, he's got. Yeah. Does, I, 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 yeah. I, I, or, yeah. I don't so, think, I don't think their class is an R lock though. No, they're not. But I'm saying, isn't there already a section within the Lego group that focuses specifically on marketing? Oh, I see. That's interesting. Like on YouTube or anywhere else, like like um, who deals with the uh, uh, re what's, what 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 is their title? <laughs> Ninja, oh, what's their title? I can't even think of it right now. Oh, uh, the, the the those build those crazy like the artists builders. that have yeah. a lot of breaks behind them. <laughs> like everybody. <else>. Anyway, <laughs> who deals know. with the people? Like, because there, there's definitely uh, looks like there's other support for other places that kind of look like they're, they're technically land related, but they're not. Why does it just, yeah, so they probably aren't involved in the forums and all that sort of stuff. Yes, they probably exactly. just get, they probably just get given sort of, um, bits and pieces so, to help the marketing side of things. So I'm just looking up the R locks now. So an R lock is people like, uh, tips and bricks, um, okay. blocks magazine. Um, well, that doesn't seem to sort of thing that's recognized online communities and they see that's it's really blurred between the rlfms you know brothers brick is, is an r lock apparently um rebel so, lug rebel lug is on there yeah there's they're, they're coming up as a recognized online community but yeah see it just to, to me it's 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 yeah it's quite so um quite blurred between I mean, we're going into a completely different topic now we're just talking about land but like <laughs> um i i do feel like there should be it sh they should just straight up come out and say this that like it's it's for marketing or move it to whoever's responsible with giving stuff to like you know star wars theory and stuff like that you know look I, mean? I think if you think that um this side of it is for anything other than marketing is you know is you're delusional if you think it's for anything else other than marketing. I mean, at the end of the day, they're a company that wants to sell products. So whether it's, you know, talking about the whole community side of things, what do you get back out of that? You're getting information that's going to help you sell a product, isn't it? You know, it's not. Um, Has your lug ever provided anything of, of what you would hope to be of use that create any differences for the entire leg community? Like problems like that you're receiving obviously you can see a lot of it online but like that you guys experience like a day-to-day -day, like when you buy stuff all that kind of like product um conformities like just oh look there's know. there's there's conversations about that sort of thing that go on all the time mm -hmm. you know like about um you know scarcity of sets you know things stock levels things like that you know there's all those conversations that go on all the time you no know, five and you know a lot of a, yeah, the fiber first battle pack, you know, that was definitely something that was that was uh, uh, <laughs> quite quite the topic. Um, but, um, you know, uh, but look, at, uh, and a lot of people and this is this is probably why maybe I didn't get involved in the conversation quite so much on, on the forums as much as I could, because a lot of people say, you know, cover things off that I would probably have chipped in and said anyway do you know what i mean like you go on and you read stuff and you go oh, i agree with that oh no i don't agree with that i agree with that and you go okay cool like blah, 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 and there you go and, you know and that's the sort of the way i yeah. there was not really anything pertinent that i had to bring up um 
that deserve to go on an online sort of community space, if you like. We definitely added our value through the the numbers that we report back. Like I say, you know, when you do shows and all that sort of stuff, you report back the interest, how many were adults, how many were kids, you know, what you were doing it for, which is all information that that helps them. Uh, Does do you receive anything back as far as like totals or like an end of year thing for the entire lug? Like, so you're, you're, it looks like you're feeding information to a machine. Do you feel like you're receiving any back that benefit you guys as a group? Other than the physical product? Yeah. Not really. I mean, that, like I say, there's a couple of opportunities there for, um, there was like, I'm trying to give an example there. Like, cause I, they, they did something recently where they were, if I remember rightly, they were recreating movie posters or some, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I sent it on to one of my guys who I knew that was really into his mock design. So he sent through a couple of his Ralph Macquarie mocks that he did, um, taken in the same sort of style as the original, you know, Star Wars designer pictures, you know, so things that sort of look good next to the picture, yeah, things like that. So, you know, there's opportunities to sort of do things, whether anything's come of those, I haven't seen, you know, whether they've been picked up for something that Lego are doing, I haven't seen any of that neither. Hmm. Okay. So I, you know, it does feel like you're feeding a machine the info, and you are getting something in return. You're getting access to lug bulk. You're getting access to the um, sets that they send you, um, and you're getting the uh, the recognition status. And this is why I say, as as someone like me who's a, is pretty much a set collector, the benefits didn't really benefit me. The benefits that I got out of being in a Lego user group was being there talking to people who were as passionate about the product as I am at ground level. You know, that is the benefit that I got. And I felt that I got more out of probably did more as far as marketing their product goes by speaking to the person in front of me, in front of my table. Do you know what I mean? That's true. Because if you don't build marks, then lug bulk is essentially useless. I've never, I've never taken advantage of lug bulk. Never taken advantage yeah. of it. Yeah. But some people have, you know, and, and yeah, good on yeah. them, you know, good on them. So to wrap it up, start a log or not, <laughs> where are we at with this? <laughs> start, <laughs> uh, no, no, look, if I had to do all this tomorrow, okay, and I wanted to start up a, or I wanted to get a group of like-minded people together, I would absolutely 100%, and if I was in your position, Shy, I would absolutely start a lug. I just wouldn't go into it with the aims of being recognized. Mm -hmm. If you get recognized and it's a bonus, it's something on there and you're happy to deal with the administration that comes along with it, perfect. You've, you've, found, you, you've found what you're keen to do. But as far as if you are just keen to get the product out there, raise a bit of money for a local school, raise a bit of money for a charity organization, show your stuff off and talk to some punters that might come through the door you've never met before, that's the kicks that I get out of it. You know what I mean? And that, you don't need I, to be recognized and, for that, basically. And you don't you absolutely do not have to be recognized for that at all. So the stress levels would be much, much better. I mean, I just want to give you an example. The last show that we did last year, um, before we, we ended up locked down again, was at my little boy's school. And it was his primary school, it was down the road from me. We raised them some really good money. They managed to buy a whole new AV system for their hall and all that sort of stuff. And to see six months later when they gave me a shout and said, hey, come and check this out. This is what we got off the back of that show. You know, and we, we got a percentage of the takings as well to help the lug. I was like, okay, well, this is what it's all about. You know, it's, it's about helping the school out. Now all these kids, well, six, 700 kids or whatever in, in the school can see the benefits of having that show that they came along to and they enjoyed as well, you know, mm -hmm. so that's what it's yeah. about and i think that's a good way to wrap it up <laughs> yeah, i mean sounds good to me i mean i learned a lot right here <laughs> glad i could well, teach you something ninja <laughs> <laughs> well i don't know if ninja and i are going to join a lug anywhere near here anytime soon um claire where you at with it no <laughs> no we had not just yet maybe um the fact that we're like unsettled with where we're going to be is like a little bit difficult but um, we did want to go to Bricks by the Bay to meet our local lug. And unfortunately we had to attend a funeral. So we were only able to be there for like not even an hour. So, and unfortunately it wasn't, um, a great representation 
of like a strong, vibrant community. But um, I'd like to give them another chance another time, maybe. You wouldn't see yourself as a influence to that to make them better? I don't think they want that. Noted. So I, I do feel that sentiment with some of them. So well, anyways, I don't want to like diminish the uh, the lug <laughs> group. Uh, it, it is It does seem to be a very positive outlet for a lot of people. And it continues to grow 100%. to this day. Uh, I, I the lugs in my area haven't died down at all. There, I've seen a lot of other lugs within. I mean, just at Brickwood, Chicago, how many lugs were there? There was a ton. So there, it's it's definitely uh, a force to be reckoned with um, for the Lego group or Lego, yeah, for the Lego group. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Not against the community to the to the Lego group. So um, with that being said, in Ninja, yeah, does anyone else have anything to say? Thanks, Rich. Let's throw that music. <laughs> nah, all good, man. All good. Check out Assembly Acquired. Okay, bye. Yay. <laughs> I'm talking out for you, bro. Appreciate it. Ah, cheers, bro. <laughs> it's, some, it's some Assembly Required. Yeah. So, yeah, I was going to say, if you're going to be going to shout out, you get the name right. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> you already plugged it like a third away in, which most people would have heard anyways. It's probably the only no, sure. other. It's the only other. I don't even listen to our podcast, but I listen to yours. <laughs>